naturalist, retired businessman, and tireless promoter of the Lake Wobegon Trail, Cliff Borgerding has another interest that keeps him busy, carving walking sticks. I started picking up walking sticks as I was walking in the woods and along the trail and stuff, and then I'm bringing them home. And, and then, of course, the next time I'd go walking, I'd forget to take the one I had brought home last time, so then I'd bring home another one. And then I got to thinking about, gee, it'd be kind of fun to play around with this wood. I like to use wood, and I've puttered around a little bit when I was a kid with wood. My dad had a sickle grinder that he'd use to sharpen sickle blades, and I would love to play with that and use that sickle grinder to take the bark and stuff off the wood. So I started doing that with my walking sticks, and I use a belt sander to do that. And so that's kind of how I got started. And then I thought, well, I've been involved with the Lake Wobegon Trail, and I was looking for ways to promote the trail. And creating a walking stick with the Lake Wobegon Trail on it sounded like a good idea. So that's kind of how I got started. I use every kind of found wood there is. Uh, and the found wood, I'm referring to stuff that's just dead laying in the woods someplace. So I'll pick up aspen or uh, tamarack is another one that I like. Tamarack is nice because it's very straight and when it dries out uh, it always has a crack in it. I use some uh, filling compound that I can color and so I'll put that in and color it a different color and so it gives it a nice little decoration to the stick as well. So tamarack, uh, aspen, uh, cherry wood, oak, uh, maple. Silver, silver maple is really nice. Silver maple is the one that that I probably like the most when it comes to using the putting a Lake Wobegon Trail on it because it is such a white, uh, pure white wood. This is an example of that. Um, as you can see, it's really, really white, and then once you put the lakes on there, it really stands out. I have the whole trail on here from St. Joe all the way to Osakis. So that's kind of what I tried to do with the sticks then is kind of a way to advertise the trail, promote the activity on the trail, give a little history of what's going on and you know what makes this area so interesting. The process I go through is I start with a stick and it's in a rough state. It's got the bark and everything on it. I'll start with just using a, a large knife and I'll kind of scale the bark off and start to see what, what shows up underneath because you never quite know what you're going to find when you start peeling that bark off. In the case of uh, black walnut, for example, it's a real hard wood to begin with. So when I started playing around with it and I was sanding it off a little bit, and the smoother it got, you kind of between the bark and the, the wood in there, there were little white inlaid in there. And then I always use tongue oil as kind of a prep when I'm, when I'm done with it. In the case of that black walnut, it took that little white that I was seeing in there and it just made it look like gold. It just was amazing. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. I've done something similar with uh, oak is a good one because the oak bark is pretty pretty tough too and it tends to stay on it. Aspen's another nice one I get. Uh, the aspen tends to have, um, and this is kind of a sample of that. Uh, on an aspen you'll get a lot of those and those tend to come out when I do my final sanding and then I apply the tongue oil to it that little knot will come out looking like beautiful red burgundy wine. You know, it's just a gorgeous color. So like I say, you never know what you're going to find underneath it. And it's all kinds. Uh, I mentioned the tamaracks, uh, the silver maple, uh, the sugar maples, of course, are really nice as well. One of my favorites, too, is the, the red cedar. This is one of my all-time best ones, I think, that I've found. It has such gorgeous colorations to it. So that one I'm going to have to save and do something special with that. Well, once I have it sanded off and I have it prepped to where I want it, then I have to put the 40,000 mile warranty on it. So I have my, my tire tips that I put on. So I played around, it took me a couple of years to finally find something that I could use and, and it turned out it was just old tires. The old uh, non-steel belted tires, it works very well. So you get a 40,000 mile warranty. You know, for the person that's gonna use it in the outdoors and the woods or something, it works just fine. And it's, besides that, it's another story to tell about the walking stick. <laughs> so that works. So once I have them to that point, then they come here in the house and then I start working on, on putting my, my engraving on it. The engraving that we had on, on this with the trail and all of that information, so I put that on. The first thing I do is on the bottom of each stick, I have 
the species of the stick, whatever it is, if it's silver maple or birch or aspen or whatever it might be, and then I have a, a serial number that I put on it. Because every one is unique. There's, not, there's no two sticks that I make that are, that are the same. But that's how I start. So then I start with my wood burning tool and I get, get the heat cranked up. And that gets to be something you kind of learn over time too, which ones you use or what temp you use on it. If it's a hard wood, then I have to use hotter uh, temperature on it. If it's a softer wood, then I have to turn it down. But in this case, this, one's a, this one I think is a pretty hard. I think this is a piece of cherry. So the first thing I'll put on here is I'll put on cherry. I'll get my uh, date and the year that I made this stick. Then I start working on the trail part. The last few sticks that I've been making, now I've been putting on the Saintly 7 to kind of remind people to help us keep pushing to have that trail done so I can use my walking stick on the trail. But no, the trail needs to go to St. Cloud and, and ideally uh, across the river into uh, the East St. Cloud as well. Absolutely. What I'm doing here is I'm putting on the what I call the trail, and it's basically just two little hash lines. It's kind of reminiscent of the rails that were on the trail bed. Kind of mimics a person walking down the trail at the oh, same time. Sure. But typically it takes to do this walking stick where I've got all the colors and I have all the trail information on it. That's going to take me at least... Uh, you know, probably three hours, four hours to get it all finished. Do the engraving on it, paint the lakes on, do the finishing. So now when I've got my stick all done, I've got all the finishing done to it, the colors are on, the, the glossy the glossy look is there, then I have to put the last little pieces to put my lanyard on it. The lanyard is, is not just a decoration, but it's also a tool that you use to kind of hang on to your stick. You use it to hang your stick up when you're done walking. But it's also, uh, in my case, what I use is I put the two big, bigger balls are the ones that are serving a real purpose. So basically what I do is I string that through that hole that, uh, for the lanyard. I put those on there. Then I string the balls on. And then once they're all on and tied together, then the walking stick itself, the reason I have that on there is now you can cinch up your wrist against that. So now when I'm walking and I want to pick something up, I can let go of my stick and it's not gonna, I'm not going to drop it on the ground. It's a decoration, but it's also a useful tool. And Another uh, project I've been working on, I uh, belong to a carbon club in St. Cloud and one of the things I eventually want to do is create faces on my stick and have what they call wood spirits. There's a gal in St. Cloud, her name is Jen Jensen, who's been doing this for many, many years. She uses cottonwood bark and that's what this is. And you can see that it's, it's very thick. We start with a big slab like this and then I cut that into pieces. The pieces end up being something like this, and then from there I go and take it and I create a finished piece out of it. And once I have that done, then I can create a spirit face with it. So I go from a, a roughed out piece that I've, I've run through a planer to get some smooth edges on it, and then I go to work and start carving on it. And so I'll end up with something like this. And, you know, I'm looking, always looking for something different to do, and a lady approached me one day and said, could you make me a walking stick with butterflies on it from the Lake Wobegon Trail? And so I said, sure, I can do that. Some butterflies that are, that are native to this area. So I went out and did a little research and I belong to the uh, Minnesota Master Naturalist Group. Uh, and so I talked to one of, my, one of my cohorts there and he gave me some ideas and did some research and that's what I came up with. Letter openers. These were these were kind of the leftover pieces. This is a this is about the length. Sometimes when I've got a walking stick, when I pick it up in the woods, do basically the same process that I do with the walking sticks. I take the bark off and I I trim them down. Then I run them through a bandsaw and I just cut them into quarter inch pieces. And I take them on my belt sander again and I sand them down. And once I've got them sanded down, I'll use a little hand sanding to get some of the final edges that I want on it. And I try to get a good edge on it so it'll cut. And then I finish it again. They work very well as a letter opener. This one's, this one's a little bigger one than what I usually would have. This is a nice size. This one's got a nice sharp edge, so this one will work good. Here's another one again. Beautiful. The ones I really like are the red cedar. I just, I just couldn't throw this stuff away. Beautiful.
That's kind of the whole thing with Lake Wobegon and the Lake Wobegon Trail. I mean, Garrison Keeler kind of, in some ways, is poking fun at small towns with his stories from Lake Wobegon. In other ways, he's reminding us to get back to nature and get back to the simple things in life. And that's really what it is. For me, the Lake Wobegon thing is kind of a way to remind us to pay attention to what's going on around you. Uh, you never know if you're going to be here tomorrow. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I started with the walking sticks. I said, my doc said I had to walk more. Well, it's because I had a heart attack, and he said, something's got to change. So that's what I started doing with the walking sticks then. So that's how I got into this. The Lake Wobegon thing, I look at it now as it's kind of, you know, let's enjoy what we've got. Sometimes we have to be hit over the head with it to realize it's there. The lady slippers are a good example. I don't know how many people I've talked to that have driven by those. They've been there for years. I only saw them five years ago. I didn't know they were there. To learn more about the trail or to contact Cliff Borgerding about one of his fantastic walking sticks, visit the website at lakewobegontrail.com. As Cliff likes to say, happy trails.